Today's NFL Daily is sponsored by True Classic Tees. Get yourself 25% off t-shirts like the one I'm wearing right now at trueclassictees.com slash chat. Today's video is a look at Todd McShay's latest 2023 NFL Draft Big Board 1 to 32. We'll go a little bit quicker early on since these are more of the household names. There were some big changes, by the way, in the back end of Todd's ranking. Some very much new introductions there. Will Anderson, still number one. He's back up to five sacks this year. He's got 11 tackles for loss, a bunch of pressures. He remains, and honestly, he could have turned pro last year and been the number one uh, pick in last year's draft class as far as I'm concerned. Anderson, correctly, I think, the number one player here. Now, we're talking Todd McShay mock draft right now. If you want Eric Todd McShay big board, if you want a mock draft from me, who historically... Just, it's just facts. Don't want to be too bragged here, but it's true. Is more accurate in their mock drafts than Todd McShay. Then like the video right now. If we get enough likes, we'll do a new mock draft for you guys here at Chat Sports. More defenders on here for Mr. McShay. Jalen Carter, who is banged up right now. And the raw stat numbers have not really popped off the screen the way we were hoping they were this year. He's battled injuries right now. He is very much a film over production guy. Carter is very talented. Two might be a bit high after a, a, a slow start to the year, but he's going to be a premium pick. Let's talk quarterbacks now. C.J. Stroud, the Ohio State quarterback, is number three. And Bryce Young is number four out of Alabama. Young, by the way, is a bit banged up right now with that shoulder injury. Young is a much more slender player than C.J. Stroud is. He's able to make some awesome plays under pressure. Stroud, I do think, benefits from a more dynamic supporting cast around him. That will be the Stroud-Young debate, even with Bryce a bit banged up right now, is not going to go away anytime soon. Number five, Bijan Robinson, the running back out of Texas. The guy is unbelievable. There are still some pass rush or pass protection stuff to improve on. But he, every time he touches the football, he's getting more than what is blocked. That is the sign of a great back. Miles Murphy, the Clemson defensive end, part of a very strong Clemson, I'll say front seven right now. Very good toolbox there for, for Murphy. That's what uh, McShay and I very much agree there. They drop into coverage some. I don't like that. A very strong edge, edge rushing class. Murphy's one worth keeping an eye on for. And Will Levis at number seven. This one might be the most controversial of the group. Levis is very much still a, a tools prospect. More show than like a, ah, uh, he does everything right. That The, the production, the, the, the consistency is there right now. He's got the arm. I like his release. The accuracy can come and go. The ball placement isn't the best. There are some rough moments under pressure. Upside? Probably higher than Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. The floor is also much, much lower, I would argue. So of the big three QBs right now, pick one for me. C.J. for Ohio State's C.J. Stroud, B.Y. for Alabama's Bryce Young, or W.L. for Kentucky's Will Levis. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and pick a QB. Brian Brzee, next up here, the Clemson defensive tackle. The, the production has never quite been there for Brzee at, at, at Clemson in his entire career. I am hopeful that can change a little bit at some point this season, but this is, a again, a traits-based prospect who can be a very dynamic three technique or five technique on the interior. Jordan Addison. Uh, maybe you haven't watched that much USC since that's, you know, packed with after dark. That USC offense is unreal, and Addison and Caleb Williams are torching every defense that they face. It's been wildly impressive so far. He's jumped. The other two top receivers we'll get to in a little bit. Michael Mayer, the tight end now from Notre Dame. I don't know if he's a top-end Kyle Pitts athlete. In fact, I know he's not. But he consistently gets open. He's a solid blocker. He's great after the catch. He's got great hands. He breaks tackles. He is a he is the engine that drives the entire Notre Dame offense. I love watching him. He's one of my favorite guys this year. In what is shaping up to be a not-so-great offensive line class, Paris Johnson has had success since moving from guard to left tackle this year. This is not based on positional value for McShay. 
could result in Johnson going earlier, but just overall players, that's why the running back's five, right? Johnson, though, as a blocker, could very well be the first tackle taken in this year's draft, even though it is only October. Today's show is made possible by our good friends over at True Classic Tees. I'm wearing one today, and you guys should be too. They look great, they feel great, and you just end up performing better, and whether it's on the field, at work, off work, you know, at the bars, on the golf course, whatever, True Classic Tees are the best t-shirts and polos out there. Get yours today, a whole bunch of them, 25% off when you use trueclassictees.com slash chat as your URL and promo code chat on top of that. I'll put both of those, the URL and the promo code, in the comments section and in the description. Keely Ringo, the Georgia corner, number 12 on this list. Uh, and, of course, the big interception in the national title game last year. Good speed, good size. I think he's still a little bit of a developmental piece overall, but the size-speed combo is tantalizing, and, you know, Georgia defensive draft pick is probably a pretty good process there. Next up is Notre Dame edge rusher Isaiah Foskey, who 6'5", 265, the listed size there. I have a little bit of concern with the overall bend that he that he offers. I think he's got a good run de defense ability, has good strength, and I think more often than not, we tend to overlook the value of a strength-based edge, like, like a George Karloftis, for example, because it's harder to find those bendy guys coming around the corner. Andre Carter has slowed down this year, 15.5 sacks last year. He's down to two in 2022, but he's got a bunch of pressures, great size. It is very, very rare for an Army player to be in the first round conversation, but Carter is. Nolan Smith out of Georgia. He's next up here. A couple sacks, a couple TFLs for a Georgia team that loves to rotate players. More of your 3-4 outside linebacker. Again, that's why. I don't know why McShay does it. Outside linebacker. He's a pass rusher. He's an edge. It's 2022. We should get with the program, but I digress. Smith, no problems there at 15. I've mostly agreed. Maybe some ed edge disagreements here. Kayshawn Bouti, the LSU wide receiver, has been non-existent th this year. In the words of producer Jack and a lot of people I know, he's been booty, and not, not in the fun way. He is a very dynamic player, but we're talking about someone who has not produced in the way that he should be producing, and that should raise some red flags. Now, Jackson Smith and Jigba has an excuse He's been injured as of late. He's only run like 30 routes so far this year. Two games, hamstring injury. We saw what he did last year. I wouldn't be that worried about JSN. Check back in November, December. I think he'll be balling on, like we saw him do last season. So pick a wide receiver for me. The big three, if you will. JSN for Jackson Smith and Jigba. JA for Jordan Addison. Or KB for Kayshawn Boutte. Peter Skaronsky, next up here. It, it's kind of a, a lesser version of the Rashawn Slater conversation here where, you know, Skaronsky is not the largest guy in terms of his arm length. He's a bit more undersized on that standpoint there. He's 18 on, on Todd McShay's big board. Uh, I think that's about right. Again, the, the he's, he's allowed two sacks it's a, or over his career. That's pretty solid production overall. The Nebraska game, by the way, I thought he was an absolute baller in that particular matchup. Very impressed with him from that standpoint. So I, I like Skaronsky quite a bit. He and Paris Johnson, the pretty clear main options there in terms of your offensive lineman early on in the 2023 NFL Draft. Let's talk Cam Smith now, the South Carolina corner. It hasn't been the most dynamic this year, but he's been solid, been steady at this point. I like what he does. Pretty quality class here. I would actually put number 20, Joey Porter Jr., over him. Yes, that is Joey Porter's son. Now, he's not a great tackler. I don't care. It's a corner. Great size. Plays really well in zone coverage. Plays some press man, too. Lots to like about Joey Porter Jr., Several more names coming up, including some big changes. The, the top 20 were, I think, all on McShay's earlier version. Who is your favorite NFL draft prospect? Let me know right now in the comment section. This is where things really change for McShay with his rankings. Cedric Tillman, I love putting in here. 
Uh, he's got to miss some time with an ankle injury. That's kind of knocked him a little bit there. He's not a true burner. I think this is the best Tennessee receiver we've seen in a very long time. Over other draft picks like Juwan Jennings, Vilas Jones, Tillman. I'm not sure I'm all the way in on top 25, but I love what he's done so far at t t Tennessee. John Michael Schmitz. I really like this inclusion by McShay. Not someone really on anyone's radar nationally, I don't think, beyond McShay here. 2,000 snaps. Uh, no sacks and six pressures. This is a high-end, you know, zone-blocking scheme offensive lineman. If you want a center, I think this is the guy to keep an eye out for. Another one of my favorite receivers, Quinton Johnson out of TCU. I'm kind of alone on this comp, but I'm going to stick with it. He's skinny Des Bryant. Wins the ball at the catch. Great body control. Great after the catch. Not the highest end burner, but fast enough with his size and ball skills to be a vertical threat in the NFL. This one might be too low from Todd. Christian Gonzalez was kind of under the radar when he transferred from Colorado to Oregon. Then Dane Bluger pointed him out and was like, oh, yeah, this guy's actually good. Had his first INT this year. Again, there's a common thread among a lot of these top corners. He's got great size and great length. That is what NFL teams are covering in the modern-day NFL. Now, if you want more NFL, college football, NFL draft, NBA, and even NBA draft coverage, this is your one-stop shop here. Hit that subscribe button, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. I, I won't lie, I was surprised that Keanu Benton cracked McShay's top 25. I think that one is a little bit too optimistic from that standpoint. I haven't been in love with this play. Definitely a draftable guy, but I, I would say maybe more top 55 than top 25. So that's the one I really don't agree with here from McShay. Love Antonio Johnson here. Uh, this, this is your modern-day overhang, big nickel defender that's so popular at the collegiate level. Great size, great playmaker. I really like Johnson as the number one safety, quote-unquote, in this year's class. Kind of feel like McShay forced back-to-back -back linemen here, but I think they're good linemen to, to go with here as teams will cover them. Jalen Duncan, who I know has been mentioned before in the comments section of this channel, uh, out of Maryland, I think a better pass protector than he is a run blocker. Also benefits from that style of offense at Maryland. Good size, though. If you want to run that quick passing game offense, there's a lot to like here from this standpoint. Osiris Torrance, a right guard, Louisiana, Lafayette to Florida. If you want a mauling, run-blocking right guard, I think Osiris Torrance is that guy. And in general, we don't see that many... Uh, Guards go early, so if you want one, this is a good name to keep an eye for. I think a little high for me. Maybe the biggest riser of the entire 2023 NFL draft of anyone is Jared Verse. From Albany to Florida State, and he's got a bit, bit banged up as of late, four sacks, nine pressures through four games, bullied LSU, put himself on the radar. I'm happy Verse made this list. Noah Sewell, who I... I have some concerns about overall in terms of just like trusting him in coverage and overall elite top end speed, but I think 30 is about the right range for him. This is, by the way, Panay Sewell's brother. I'm happy to report Tyree Wilson made this list, by the way. Texas Tech defensive end. The people who do the NFL like combine rankings, I forget what they're called exactly. I'll put it in the description though. Uh, they really like Wilson, so he's on the NFL radar for sure. Five sacks, eight TFLs, 16 pressures. Under the radar, because it's Texas Tech, he's awesome. And then Derek Hall, who is a pure edge all the way, got some burst. I don't love him as a run stopper, kind of a pass rush specialist there. But he's been quite productive so far from Auburn. Again, early results, look at all those defensive ends, outside linebackers. A really good pass rushing class, I suspect, this year. Now, there are only 32 names on that list, so somebody had to be left off it, or somebody's, I should say. Who do you think was disrespected in the Todd McShay big board here? Let me know in the comments section. I've got some names I'll mention. I think the really big miss was Clark Phillips out of Utah. I love his game. I think he should be more of a top 20 player, not just a top uh, 32 player. As we sit in October, things can change. Uh, Felix and you do, uh, excuse me, and you DK Uzama, FAU for short from KSU. Awesome edge rusher, but there were a lot of guys on this list, so I get it there. Trenton Simpson, uh, quite impressed by him as of late. The Clemson linebacker, good football player. 
Uh, Keandre Coburn, under the radar, has been awesome for Texas. I like Jervin Dexter as well from Florida. Tyreek Stevenson, the Miami Hurricanes corner, has flashed some. I'll mention quarterback Tanner McKee. I know the NFL likes him. I'm not as high on him. Another offensive lineman to consider is Blake Freeland for BYU. We saw him play Christensen go pretty early. Freeland might be better. Josh Downs, the next best receiver left off that list. Jameer Gibbs from Alabama, the, uh, the, the explosive big play threat for the Crimson Tide. I'll make note of Darnell Washington. He has been way better than Eric Gilbert, who can't even get on the football field. And one last name here, Olu Mashuanu, the Penn State offensive tackle. Big, big riser this year. Keep an eye on that name for the 2023 NFL Draft.